in this lecture we're going to learn the rules for solubility and these rules for solubility applies to all the compounds and you can figure out which compounds are soluble and which compounds are less soluble so for example the first one uh, the first statement states that all group 1 NO3 minus 1 NH4 plus compounds are soluble which means that any compound that has a group 1 element in it a group 1 metal ion in it or a nitrate in it or an ammonium ion in it it's going to be soluble for example if I have uh, sodium sulfate which is Na2SO4 now this compound would be soluble because it has sodium in it because sodium belongs to group 1 or any other compound for example if I have aluminium nitrate now if I have aluminium nitrate which is AlNO3 there would be uh, three nitrate ions this compound would also be soluble because it has this nitrate ions or any compound that has ammonium in it so for example if I have a compound which is ammonium phosphate so this compound would also be soluble because it has an ammonium ion in it so any com compound that has sodium ions nitrate ions or ammonium ions in it those compounds would all be soluble and they would dissociate in aqueous state Similarly, all acids are also soluble. So if you have, uh, I'll take the example of any acid, if you have HCl, so HCl would be very soluble in water. It's going to dissolve in water to form an aqueous solution. Uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, uh, that's also very soluble. Nitric acid, so any acid uh, that you have, it's going to be very soluble in water. It's going to dissociate in aqueous state and it's going to mix with water. The third rule for solubility applies to sulfates. So all sulfate compounds, any compound that contains SO4 2 minus ions, they are soluble except for these four compounds. One is barium sulfate, is that compound is insoluble, lead sulfate is also insoluble. You have silver sulfate and strontium sulfate, they're also insoluble. And calcium sulfate is partially soluble, which means that it is somewhat soluble, but not uh, completely soluble. So it's partially soluble. So any compound other than these four, for example, if I have sodium sulfate or I have magnesium sulfate or I have uh, FeSO4, iron sulfate, iron 2 sulfate. So all these compounds, uh, let's pick another one, potassium sulfate. So any sulfate compounds, they are going to be soluble. So these are some of the few examples which are soluble compounds. So apart from these four, you need to remember which four compounds are not soluble. So apart from these sulfate compounds, all the rest of the sulfate compounds would be soluble and would have good solubility. And they would also dissociate in aqueous state and they're going to dissolve in water to form aqueous solutions. The fourth rule for solubility of compounds applies to chlorides, bromides and iodides. So it applies to halide compounds. So any compound containing these are Cl-1, Br-1 or I-1 ions. Uh, so these compounds are all soluble except uh, there are a few exceptions uh, silver if silver ions or if those compounds contain lead ions or mercury ions so silver chloride silver bromide silver iodide would not be soluble lead chloride lead bromide lead iodide that would also not be soluble similarly mercury chloride or mercury bromide they would not be soluble so compounds containing these three ions or compounds of chlorides bromide iodide containing these three ions they would not be soluble apart from these all the rest of the compounds are going to be soluble for example if i have iron chloride fecl3 three, iron 3 chloride that's soluble if i have uh, magnesium chloride that would also be soluble so any chloride apart from these three containing these three ions uh, all the rest of the compounds uh, having cl minus 1 br minus 1 or i minus 1 they would be soluble and they would also form aqueous solutions which would dissociate in aqueous state the fifth rule for solubility applies to carbonates and phosphates. So any compound containing carbonates and phosphate, they are going to be insoluble except for compounds that also contain group 1 uh, metal ions or ammonium ions. So any compound containing carbonate and phosphate is going to be soluble except if it has group 1 ammonium ions. So for example, uh, for example I have uh, sodium carbonate. Now sodium carbonate would be insoluble but since it has a group 1 ion in it so this compound would be soluble so this is not soluble it's going to be soluble it's going to be in aqua state and it's going to form an aqua solution Other, uh, on the other hand if i have calcium carbonate uh, 
Now, if you look at calcium carbonate, calcium is in group 2. So, this exception, exception rule doesn't apply to this. So, all carbonate compounds are insoluble. So, this one is also insoluble. So, in your equation, your reaction, it's going to be a solid. So, compounds that are uh, containing carbonates and phosphates that do not contain group 1 or ammonium ions, they are going to be insoluble. The last point about solubility is for hydroxides. So all hydroxide compounds are also insoluble except there are a few exceptions. Ammonium ions, if they contain ammonium ions, ammonium hydroxide is not is not going to be insoluble, it's going to be soluble. So these are some of the exceptions. So ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH, any compound, uh, so this is going to be in aqua state, any compound belonging to group one, a hydroxide belonging to group one, for example, NOH, that would also be in aqua state and there are some that are present in group 2 that are also soluble and i'm going to list those uh, the bottom ones are soluble you have uh, as you move down the group calcium hydroxide is only partially soluble so it's only it's only very slightly partially soluble but as you move down the group strontium hydroxide and barium hydroxide would have much greater solubility they would be soluble so barium hydroxide so the bottom ones are soluble so these are going to be soluble and solubility increases as you move down the group so these are the exceptions so ammonium hydroxide group 1 hydroxides group 2 hydroxides some of the group 2 hydroxides which i have listed over here they are soluble apart from these all the rest of the hydroxides are insoluble I would also like to mention a few points about oxides over here. Remember that uh, oxides which contain O2- or hydroxides, they are pretty much the same thing. They, they can be interchangeably used. The only thing is that if you have sodium oxide, uh, the solubility is going to be the same as well. So if you we talk about sodium oxide which is Na2O, uh, when you dissolve an, an oxide in water, the oxide ion gets converted into a hydroxide ion so it becomes NaOH and you can balance that there would be two NaOH uh, so it applies to any oxide that dissolves in water so for example if you have barium oxide BaO and I mix it with water H2O it's going to get converted into barium hydroxide so the difference between oxides and hydroxides is that if you add water an oxide gets converted into hydroxide if you remove water the hydroxide gets converted into the oxide back again so whenever we are talking about oxides we basically uh, think of oxides as being without water so always whenever you write the state for an oxide it's going to be a solid because if there was water present then it would be a hydroxide and not an oxide so always remember oxides for oxides the state would always be written as solids the solubility of oxides is the same as hydroxides but the thing is that if an oxide is aqueous it would no longer be an oxide if Na2O is aqueous then it's no longer going to remain as Na2O it's going to get converted into NaOH so when we, whenever we think of oxides uh, the solubility would be the same as hydroxides but always write solids, uh, a solid state for oxides